Hello everyone, it's Dio from Firm But Fair Gaming bringing you another Diablo 3 video. Welcome everyone to another Season 25 video. So today we're going to be taking a look at the Barbarian, the Wrath of the Waste speed farming build. And before we jump into it, I just want to say uh, we're getting close to 3,000 subs on the channel. So we're trying to hit that mark this month. So that'd be awesome. If you guys could like, share, and subscribe, that would be awesome. And that's the only plug I want to do. So let's just jump into the actual video. So basically, this is going to just showcase the efficiency or the speed factor of this build. It's going to be some very similar to the S tier build that we put out earlier. Uh, this is the build that I use when I'm farming GRs, speed runs on the Barbarian, as well as when I am doing bounties. So without further ado, let's take a look at what we got. Okay, jumping into the itemization, I'm just gonna throw up a little video down in the bottom of just how it moves throughout the rifts or the bounties. So basically we are using much of the same items that we obviously have for our build. Um, so we need to have the six piece here of the Wrath of the Waste, so that's everything. And then we're wearing squirts for the neck, we're using Mortix Brace to give Wrath of the Berserker every rune. We got Lamentation for the belt, so Ren can stack up two times. So basically it's everything that we would normally have, same with the Obsidian Ring, the re uh, Convention of Elements. The difference is that we're going to be using Engium and then Echoing Fury for the increased uh, attack speed that we get from that. And NGM we're using so every time we kill an elite or a guardian, uh, our cooldowns are reduced by 10 seconds for the next 15 seconds. So that's just going to help us keep Wrath of the Berserker up. And also for when we dive into our skills, it's going to reset our charges and our leaps that we're using for the efficiency and the speed of moving through the zones. So just taking a quick look at the cube, so for the cube, we have Amble's Pride. So ta every attack with Whirlwind also applies Rend, and the total damage of Rend is dealt over one second. Then we have the Mantle of Channeling. So basically while we're Whirlwind, we deal 25% more damage and take 25% less. And then of course the Band of Might. So after we charge, leap, or stop, we take the 80% reduced damage. So we don't have stomp in this build. We're going to be leaping and charging. If you're finding that you're already tanky enough and not having any issues with survivability, then we can use Krem's uh, buff belt. So we get increased run speed as well. So that is another option for some more efficiency. And then if we want to take a look at our gems, so we have Stricken, I have Stricken in here. I should have taken that out. I was doing GRs earlier. So we would then have Bane of the Powerful or we would have Wreath of Lightning. So where is my Bane of the Powerful? It is on one of my other characters. That is poorly set up. So we would grab a Bane of the Powerful in here or Wreath of Lightning. So Wreath of Lightning, of course, as we shock things with Lightning and gain increased move speed. So that'll help us there. And then, of course, we're using Bane of the Trap to increase damage against enemies that are under a control impairing effect, which just has its own aura doing that. And then, of course, we have uh, Tagux, so gain increased damage and armor for while well, we have a channeled skill and uh, Whirlwind is a channeled skill, so that's what we're going to get there. And then for our soul shards, same as what we had for the solo push build, we are going to have the Sliver of Terror and the Helm, so reduces cooldowns and all that stuff. And basically we're using the Ring of Fire, so you cast a Devastating Ring of Fire after killing 100 enemies. And of course, for each skill on cooldown, we're going to deal increased damage. And then for our weapon, we are using Essence of Anguish. So this is whenever we kill an enemy, you deal the damage done by the death blow to all enemies within 25 yards, which is convenient because that's how Ren works. So we're just doing that as things die, they kind of blow up and blow up other people. And then we, when we deal poison damage to an enemy, we increase our move speed um, and we do take a little bit more damage but that's fine so we got to make sure that we have poison on at least one of our weapons as well that affix uh, for the uh, shard in our weapon is a little less necessary if we're just doing bounty runs because we're probably over tuned for the bounty runs anyways and just more needed for if we're doing speed grs so for the skills, I'm just actually going to throw up a GR down on the bottom. So it was a 110 that I'm doing. Um, so it's not quite as fast as what I was hoping. I was able to get it done in four, just under four minutes, but I am not augmented on any 
pieces of gear. So by the time we're doing speeds and that, we're probably most likely augmented. So that means that the clears would be even faster. Obviously it's not as fast as the Monk, but the Monk is just ridiculous this season, but it's still a pretty fast clear uh, with this build. And if I was augmented, I would have been probably easily able to get that done in two, two and a half minutes, probably even get it up to 115s maybe closer to the 120s. I have no doubt about that. I just haven't had any luck farming ancient gear so far on my barb. Anyways, enough about that. Jumping into the skills, it is much the same as what you would see in the solo push build. So we have Ren with Bloodbath, uh, then we're going to have Whirlwind with Wind Shear, and then we also have Battle Rage with Swords to Plowshares, and then Wrath of the Berserker with Insanity, but the Wrath Berserker gets all runes due to our Bracers. The difference is we are getting rid of Ground Stomp and uh, also getting rid of the Ancient Spear with Rage Flip. And instead I am putting in Leap. So basically uh, I'm using this as movement to, can, to jump over walls for speed efficiency or just cross more distance. When I have also, when we have Fierce Charge, so if my charge is on CD, I'll Leap. And then I'm going with Dreadnought to give myself three charges. And then basically that is my... Increased move speed, we're going to have the buff and just constantly flying forward through the rifts as we go or the bounties as we're doing them. It's very useful and efficient at crossing vast amounts of distance very, very quickly. And with using the NGM combination, we're going to most likely run into elites before either the, before we're either out of all three charges of of uh, charge or <laughs> if leap is on CD, we're most likely gonna run into champ or elite and reset those with the NGM, which is just going to let us continually fly forward through the rift. For the rotation in the speed build, it's much the same. We're going to just want to spin around and during our physical cycle, which is now, we would just manually apply the rend and otherwise we're just going to let Rend apply naturally. We want to keep Wrath of the Berserker up at all times. And then, whereas instead we're not going to have the stomp to proc our Band of Might, instead we're just going to charge or we're going to leap and that's going to have the same effect of recharging our Band of Might. Ultimately, this build is pretty fun with its utility, especially with the leap, it lets us jump over walls. So when we're doing bounties or if we're in some rifts like uh, the barracks, or I'm thinking like the Adria levels where there's so many chambers and all that, being able to jump over walls and get to clear space where you can just charge, charge and move forward is pretty helpful. Um, this is, I love this build for bounties. It's almost as efficient as the Demon Hunter speed build, but uh, obviously the Demon Hunter is one of the if not the most efficient build. This one I feel is very much up there. So it's pretty fun when, if you need the farm gear on the Barbarian, I would definitely recommend this build. I also do it for key farming as well. It's so efficient and it keeps up with some of the quickest builds that are out there. So it's a lot of fun. So that just brings us to the end of the video. So if you have any questions or comments about the build, or if you have your own variation of a speed bar build, I'd love to see that. Uh, I enjoy this class a lot and it helps like w when you're tired of zine to actually go do some damage on this build. So yeah, if you have any questions or comments, let me know below. And as always, we appreciate any likes, shares, and subscribes. We're chasing that 3K number this month. So hit the subscribe button, love to hit that goal. Anyways, I hope you're enjoying season 25 and we'll catch you in the next video.